is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825. Five five two two five. Ken's show, The Ken Coleman Show, deals with careers. You getting the job you love. His brand new book that came out last week uh, has go, went on sale last week. We've been pre-selling it, but it hit the actual shelves and shipped into your mailbox and so forth last week. From paycheck to purpose, the clear path to doing work you love. On the heels of that book actually uh, launching on the street date last week, uh, we are launching pre-sale yesterday on uh, the first book I've done in eight years. It's called Baby Steps Millionaires, How Ordinary People Built Extraordinary Wealth and how you can, too. It's on pre-sale now. You can get it at RamseySolutions.com. You can get Ken's book at RamseySolutions.com. The pre-sale on mine, like all of our others, has a whole bunch of goodies in it, including audio books and e-books and $100 worth of stuff to go with it. So check out books. They are available. A lot of things you can't get this year for Christmas. These books you'll be able to get. Well, Baby Steps comes out in January, but... um, but you can go ahead and do the pre-sale and put the, uh, I don't know, wrap up something under the tree. Yeah, you put a picture of it or something in a stocking. Maybe take a picture. By the way, speaking of pictures. Put it in Ken's book. Uh, I like seeing the, oh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. The gift that keeps on giving. Uh, so I like the new picture, by the way. I mean, not only is it the first book in eight years, but we've got a uh, updated pic looking pretty cool there, standing in the meadow. I mean, I like the whole th- scene there. It looks like the sun rising. Did you take that at yeah. six in the morning? Yeah, we did. We went out to my farm. Yeah. And did a photo shoot as as the sun was coming up. Yeah, it's fun. And uh, they did a really good job with it. Um, and you know, Photoshop's amazing. <laughs> uh, I've said that. Yeah, <laughs> I've said that. I, I, one of my main objections with putting my face on the book was if people, if I ever get the privilege to meet people, they're gonna go, wow. Yeah. Whoa, they really, really glamour <laughs> shot you up, up pal. They touched that up. <laughs> yeah, well. No, our team does a great job, so it's it's good. It's exciting stuff. Fun times. Yeah. Fun times. So check it all out at RamseySolutions.com. Meantime, here, the phone number is 888-825-5225. Manisa is with us in Austin, Texas. Hi, Manisa. How are you? Hi, Dave. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? So I was calling because um, you don't know this, but you your book helped me to get out of credit card debt. Good for you. So I thank you. I started with my, by myself, trying to to take care of myself, and then I showed my my parents, but they were skeptics. Uh, my mom finally got on board, and then my dad got on board, and so we we no longer have credit card debt. Um, however, now we're in the dilemma where the house that we purchased was a wreck, so we had to sell it to an investor, and we're in limbo. We don't have anywhere to go. The, the housing market is, is so bad, we, we keep getting outbid for houses. Uh, we tried buying a trailer house, and there's issue with land. So I'm, I'm thinking I needed to go directly to you to find out how do I invest so that I can build my wealth I know I, I, you're, one, of, one of the sections in your book says to get uh, an emergency fund uh-huh. and then do 401. Of course, I had already had my 401, and but I, for some reason, I can't get the $1,000. Uh-huh. I can't even get $100, so, and I don't know what that is. So I was hoping uh-huh. maybe you can lead me in the right direction. Okay. Uh, who's we? Your parents and you are doing all this together? Yes, I try to do it on my own. I, I saw I read the book. I mean, I no, I mean to, you're like you're like the house you own. You own with your parents. Yes, we did, but we we had to sell it because it was just it, so it's sold. Apart. So you don't currently own a house with your parents. No, sir. We we were trying to buy one. Good. Don't don't we, don't own a house with your parents. How old are you? I'm fifty two. Don't own a house with your parents. Well, I, they they need me. 
Well, they, they, they can get a place to rent. You can help take care of them, but you don't need to own a house with your parents. This is, this is a bad plan. Um, yeah, I completely agree with you. <laughs> okay, good. Then don't do it. I agree with you. Yeah, so, so okay. how much of the money, did you get money from the sale of the other property? Um, because we had to sell to a, a home investor, we didn't really get that much. But we have $15,000. You have how much? Um, $15,000. Okay, e- and so you have 7500 for them and 7500 for you, right? Uh, well, they can have all of it. I, I, I mean, You're going to give them all of it. Okay, then what yeah, do you make a year? Um, about 41000 Okay, and how did you get out of debt? We just... Did your baby steps? We took well. That's baby bills. step one's a thousand dollars. You said you couldn't do that. Well, no, not, we we that, so I've been trying to to do that, but every time something comes up that we need to start taking the money out. And okay, there's not a we. Anything. You're fifty two. Yes, that's there's true. a them and a you. Yes. There's no we. Yes, sir. Okay, so you make forty one thousand dollars a year, and how yes. did you pay off credit card debt? Well, um, so at first... You, you just, got on a budget, and you found money in the budget, and you put it on the credit cards, right? Well, uh, what I did was is that we took all of the bills, and the, the one that was the lowest, we just split the, the, the balance three ways, and we, we paid that. And then we paid... We, we did that for each one of the bills until we got them all paid off. Okay. All right. So you found a mon- money in your personal income to apply to the debt, correct? Yes. Yes, sir. So that's how you do your thousand dollars. Only now it's okay. going to be you, and you need to go find an inexpensive place to rent. Give them the fifteen thousand. Set up your life, and begin to work the baby steps with a written budget. You're not doing a budget, and you need to start doing a budget immediately. So get on every dollar and download the uh, the world's best budgeting app and get your Get your budget going to where you are doing this. But, Manisa, you have to separate. You can love mom and dad, but you're 52 years old. Time to move out of your mother's basement. Time to quit sharing bills with your mom and dad. It is way past time. Unless you have some kind of a a mental disorder that doesn't enable you to live on your own. But you need to do that, and you need to do it now. And I don't think you do, based on talking to you. Yeah, I, I would just add one thing, Manisa, that I want you to ask yourself. You said, they need me, but I wonder how much you need them, and you're not even aware of how much they're a safety net for you, for you not to truly fly and to do what you're supposed to be doing. I think you've got to really confront that. I think at 52, it's time, as Dave said, for you to strike out and do your own thing. And at $41,000... A year, you can get that $1,000 emergency fund pretty quickly yeah. and move through this. And before you know it, be truly in a great place financially. Yeah, get the least expensive thing. Don't buy a trailer. They go down in value. Get the least expensive thing you can get to rent. Get yourself started get, and take all the extra jobs you can take and get on a written budget and begin to build the $1,000 and then work your way on up through all of the baby steps. And you'll be just fine. You can do this. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're ready to get out there and find a job you love, then you need to hear this. Job hunting can be stressful and time consuming, but my friends at ZipRecruiter have made the whole job search way easier. ZipRecruiter is rated the number one job site in the US by G2 and it's free. So how does it work? First, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken, then create a free profile and let their technology do the hard work by finding and sending you jobs that are a great fit. And get this, ZipRecruiter pitches your profile to companies whose jobs match your skills and experience. If someone from that company likes your profile, they can personally invite you to apply for the job. So if you're ready for an easier job search, check out ZipRecruiter. Sign up for free right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Sign up today absolutely free and let ZipRecruiter work for you. This is the Ram. 
Ramsey Show. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author with his new book, From Paycheck to Purpose, The Clear Path to Doing Work You Love, is answering your career and job questions. I'm answering your money questions. We're answering your life questions together. You jump in. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Ahmed is, Ahmed is with us. Ahmed in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Hi, how are you? Hi, Dave. Uh, I'm doing good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? So currently, I'm trying to transition from just working as a gig worker. I'm trying to get into the cybersecurity field. And I was wondering if I should get a degree or just work on it on my own and get certification that way. Certification. Uh, There is no evidence anywhere, and I would welcome your research to prove me wrong, but there's no research that would bear out that a degree is going to help you get into cybersecurity faster and make more money. In fact, there's such a demand in this industry, and it is white hot. It is probably the most, uh, not just fastest growing, but the most opportunity long term with cybersecurity. And uh, I, I endorse a program called Bethel Tech. And they can train you in nine months for, if you cash flow it, less than $13,000. That's just one example. Do your homework. Look at other people as well. Uh, but you don't need a degree to get into cybersecurity. If you get certified, and while you're getting certified, you are making connections in the field, talking to folks that are working in cybersecurity, getting ideas from them, companies that are hiring, directions to go within cybersecurity. Uh, those two things, getting certified and getting connected, is all you need to do to get in a four-year information systems degree is an excellent degree field the technical items you learn while doing that are obsolete by the time you finish the degree yeah they're of no value i've got you know, we got oh, a thousand okay. team members here i've got an in-depth security teams internet uh cyber security team obviously we've got a lot of web presence and uh, a lot at risk and so we spend a lot of time and money on cybersecurity and uh, a four-year degree in information systems is not a requirement to join a team our size we do look for the certifications in this and we do want to see uh, that, that you've got some kind of hands-on experience actually fighting to keep the hackers out which is the full-time freaking job these days mm-hmm. but um yeah, Ken's exactly right. This is not a four-year degree world. The technology field in general is not a four-year degree world. Um, if you want to get it, that's fine. But what you're after there is, if, if what you're after is the ability to get hired, it's not necessary. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's not even preferable because what you're learning is processes and concepts, not the technical hands-on application. Because the stuff you learn today, a year and a half from now, will be obsolete. You've got to have your hands on this stuff to know what's going on in that world. Uh, you blink and it all changes again. Uh, you know how your computer is uh, obsolete, Ken? You got it out of the box. Yeah, isn't that the truth? Yeah. That's how about how it works. This freaking thing's a doorstop six months later. That's right. The number of times I replace technology around here is unbelievable. The money we spend just to stay not on cutting edge, but just to stay up to speed, cybersecurity included, but even hardware issues as well. Bobby's with us in Columbia, South Carolina. Hey, Bobby, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave, uh, and it's George, right? Uh, this is Ken today. But George, I'll answer George it, George. Was with me. George was with me yesterday. <laughs> oh, very nice. Well, Ken, Dave, I just want to say thank you both. Um, very George much. is nicer than Ken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't argue that. He's the nicest person on the planet. He is. Yeah, he's nicer than all of us. That's good stuff. Good personality qualities right there, right? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about all I that. How can we help? Um, basically, you know, recommended to you from a previous boss and a longtime friend of mine, uh, you know, a very humble man, a uh, man of God, Brandon Blake. Thank you very much. I hope you hear this. Um, I'm uh, kind of in a pickle right now, Dave. Uh, I'm 24 years old. Um, I'm a young father. I got a three-year-old. He'll be three in December. Absolute pride and joy in my life and my biggest form of motivation. Um, and my wife and me, we're still together. Um, I'm currently living with some relatives, and I've been here for about mm, seven months. Uh, my wife was working full-time and just switched to staying at home to watching our son while I work full-time. I just got a really nice job, the best one I've had since I've been working in the professional field, um, 401K offered, pay time off, bonus structure, things of that nature. Um, I'm in a very weird position, though, with how to take, you know, I'm very young with my professional career. I want to set up my foundation with investing properly. Um, As we stand right now, my debt, I only have about $20,000 of debt, $17,000 in student loans, about 
two thousand dollars in medical bills and how much do you make um, thirty-five thousand dollars a year. Um, if my bonus comes out the way that it should this next year, it'll be at forty. Working forty hours. Forty hours a week, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, and your your baby's how old? Uh, he'll be three in December, December sixth. Okay. What was your wife doing before she quit? She was working as a cake decorator for Lowe's Foods, um, and has since lost her position, uh, mainly due to it was during COVID, so it got pretty hectic. Um, and right now she's just staying at home. And interestingly enough, she also has an international business degree, four-year university from Rollins. Um, but she doesn't have any direct experience working in the field, um, not even in a job, like a starting job that would even be relatable to that. Yeah. What's the pickle uh, that you're in? You've given us a lot of my, details. What's the pickle? My pickle is I have two options right now. Um, you know, eventually, inevitably, I want to move out. Um, my mom and dad are generous enough to allow me a little, allow, allow me to live rent free. Um, so the only thing I'm having is living expenses and a couple other payments. Um, but I need to figure out, you know, if I mean, obviously, saving money is what needs to happen. Um, but where to put that money is the question. You no, know, there's I, not any question. You're you're broke and you're living with your parents. You need to pile up some money in a savings account and get out of there. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to no, start. Don't right. worry about investing and don't start your 401k. You're broken in debt. And you guys well, have got to do problem. something in this household to increase your incomes. So since you're only working 40 hours, you need an extra job. And your wife needs to start doing some freaking cake decorating while she's at home with a three-year-old. Yeah. No, you're right. You're not wrong, Dave. Um, and I guess my next question is, you know, to make my the smartest decision possible, um, you know, my credit score is pretty good at 700. Um, my, my thought process was getting a, either a mortgage on a house. No, you're broke. <laughs> You need to go get a one-bedroom or a two-bedroom apartment as cheap as you can get. And you need to pile up cash as much as you can. And you need to be working 80 hours a week. And she needs to start working 30 hours a week when the kid's down so she can get some other income coming in. You guys need to get your income up fifty to 70000 immediately and start paying these debts off and get out from under your parents' roof yesterday. Yes, sir. My question is, though, in regards to the rent, with renting, I mean, as you know, rental properties, the money you put in goes into a hole, you don't get it back. Honey, um, you're broke. You're a renter. You don't buy a house when you're broke. You are broke and in debt. You make $35,000 a year and have a three-year-old, and you're 24 years old. You don't go buy a house right now. This house will be a curse to you. You're trying to mix long-term issues in with your short-term emotions and you need to get the short-term stuff taken care of you need a big pile of money for an emergency and to move and to get out and you guys need to get your incomes up and then you begin to attack the debt and when the debt is gone you build an emergency fund a fully fund big emergency fund of three to six months of expenses then we'll start talking about saving for a house you're not buying a house for three two to three years from today if you're wise it's just hard dave because you know with rent it's not hard an additional expense. It's not hard. You're 24. You'll be 27 when you own your first house. It's not hard at all. Yeah, somebody has told you that renting is throwing money away, and you can't get past that thought, and it's simply not throwing money away. For two years, when Stacy and I moved here to join Dave, this was the move for me. We took two years and rented because we wanted to make sure we were going to the right place. We wanted to make sure that we were going to lock in and, and dive in, and we had to save money to be able to get the kind of house that we felt that we wanted to get. We weren't throwing money away. That's a false narrative, and you're not hearing the wisdom and the truth here that Dave just gave you. The baby steps work every time, but only if you get this mindset out of your head that renting is wasting money. Renting is buying patience while you're too broke to buy. Oh, that's good. You're buying you're buying time. Mm-hmm. And honey, you're you're so broke you live with your parents. That's how broke you are. You don't need to go from that to owning a home. You you, you need to get out, get the debts paid off, build up an emergency fund, build a foundation for your young family. Slow your butt down. You're okay. You got plenty of time. This is The Ramsey Show.
If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. personality number one best-selling author is my co-host today in the lobby of ramsey solutions on the debt-free stage richie and carol are with us hey guys how are you hey Fine, Dave, how are we're you? doing good how about you better than i deserve welcome where do you guys live we knoxville, are tennessee. Knoxville, tennessee knoxville <laughs> all right good people i was born just south of there in maryville Marvel. 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 Definitely. Got to, got, you have to say that correctly. Yes, you All do. right. So how much debt have you guys paid off? We paid off $79,515.50. All right. How long did this take? It took us 23 months. Good for you. And your range of income in that two years? Um, we started off at 58000 and then we're on track this year to be at about 108000 Whoa. Wow. <laughs> there we go. Yes. What do you guys do for a living? Um, I'm an elementary school music teacher. Mm -hmm. And I'm in sales. Okay. So where'd the extra 50 grand in income? I mean, you doubled your freaking income. <laughs> we did. Um, so I started off in a smaller job with not so much pay. And then um, right after the COVID pandemic, when school started opening up, I um, was hired into my teaching position. Oh, so you so. got like a, a full big job. Pretty much, and yes. And you were not, you're working like part-time kind of. Uh, yeah, pretty okay. much, yes. And sales is good, obviously. It's got its ups and downs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So eighty thousand dollars in debt. What was it? What kind of debt? It was a little bit of everything. We, um, it was credit cards, car, truck, uh, motorcycle, cruise. student loans, cruise. We paid off a cruise. So it was a you guys of, were like normal. We were so normal. You bought everything <laughs> on debt. Yes, we did. Unfortunately. Look at you. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, so what happened two years ago? How long y'all been married? Uh, six and a half years. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, after four years of marriage or three years of marriage, someone says this Ramsey stuff. We got to try it. Tell me how this happened. What happened? <laughs> so um, it happened a little bit before. Um, I had found um, out about you mm -hmm. um, through some friends, and mm -hmm. so I started listening to your podcast, um, looking through all your tools and everything. And I told him, I said, "Hey, let's try this." He's like, "No, I'm not interested. No, I don't want to do this." That's um, stubborn. And yeah. then about two years ago. So um, he had an emergency appendectomy. Oh. And so mm -hmm. I was sitting in the emergency room waiting, and I was like, there's no way. Because with my income, if something worse were to happen, we couldn't be able to pay our bills. We, mm -hmm. And I was I was in freak out mode. Um, and so when we got home from the appendectomy, I looked at him and I said, we have to do now this. Now that you lived, if now you don't you do this, <laughs> I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And so um, that was kind of our I had it moment. Um and so since then, we really, really buckled down. Um, okay. And it took him a little bit to get on board, but I mean. First couple of times, I'd, you know, she was just like, let's try this Dave Ramsey thing. And um, I was just like, no. <laughs> I just I was stubborn, just like everybody else is. Well, I'm a salesman. I always tried to outsell my stupidity. And <laughs> right, I tried to and, I just tried to out earn it, right? Yep. Yeah. And so <laughs> after uh, after the the surgery, I was just like, okay, let's give it a shot. And we started off. We had a little bit of money put back, and we paid off one of our credit cards. Yeah. And as soon as I paid off that credit card, I got a massive adrenaline rush, and I was just like, okay, what else can we pay off now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it just kind of went from there. He was well, finally on board. Dopamine hit. Here yes, we go. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So it, that's when he finally was on board. Um, okay. And then we finally were able to 
start really getting some debt paid off. So I was catching the YouTube uh, feed through my peripheral vision while I was looking at y'all. I saw the motorcycle pop up. <laughs> did you keep it or did you sell it? No, I actually sold it to pay off uh, the hospital, the appendectomy. Oh, she we told did. me she this says this is uh, not a good trade. No, no. Well, yeah. we, that <laughs> An was appendix part of, for a motorcycle. Right. I'm just not okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we um, that was part of our debt. We paid off the motorcycle right. and then we turned around and sold it to pay off the medical debt. Uh, so. What did it sell for? It looks like a great bike. It uh, I sold it for twenty five hundred dollars. Oh wow! And mm-hmm. that that covered everything. And I told her I, when I sold it, naturally, I said, "So we pay this off, and after we're debt free, yeah, I want to buy another bike." Amen. And she said, "Okay, yeah, absolutely, so we're, we're yeah. setting up a, a better sinking one. fund. Yeah, a better one. We're right. setting up a sinking fund for that. So yeah, pay cash yeah. for it. Yeah, that's that, that's what you, you live like. No one else later, you can live like no one else. Exactly. Exactly. Ride like no one else later, you can ride like yes. no one else. Yes, that's good. Way to go, man. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you. So you guys just when you once you, that adrenaline hit, you leaned in, and 23 months later, boom, boom. We did. There we was really some did. struggles, of course. Mm-hmm. Where what I'd, was the biggest struggle? Uh, probably um, having to say no a lot. Yeah. Um, being like, no, we can't go out. No, we can't do this or do that. No, we don't need that. Even though your friends look at you like you lost your mind. Yes. They did. They were like, well, what? Just go out and have fun. Everyone's going to be in debt. Everyone's going to have debt. Just go out and have fun. And we we're like, no, we don't want to do that. We don't want to be in debt anymore. It's wearing us down. It's worn us down our entire marriage, and mm. we just don't want to do it anymore. So I, I love when 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 couples share the struggle. Mm-hmm. I want to know in your situation. What did you two do for each other or individually to keep pressing on through the struggle? Mm -hmm. What kept you moving? We, um, We had to be each other's rock. Yes. There were times where he wanted to quit, where I was like, no, we're doing so well. We have to do this. We have to keep going. There were times I wanted to quit and he said, no, no, we can't. You know, we just, we really had to push each other to keep going. Um, I mean, and. And we would pull up the podcast. We would listen. Um, Dave, we watched your story a lot on YouTube about where you came from and where you're at now. And we said, brought well, you me know to what? tears every single yeah. time I wanted to hear the story. So it was just one of those things where we had to remind ourselves what we're doing it for. Um, so later on, when we have kids of our own, that they don't have to live like we did. Yeah. Um, I love that. I want to ask you. Yeah. Take me to one of those moments. What, either one of you. I don't care. But what did you say? I know that you were each other's rock. But what was that thing maybe that you said besides watching Dave's story and seeing that desire future certainly that's motivating but what'd you say to each other to go hey stick with us what'd you say we would be out somewhere it didn't matter what store we went to if we wanted to buy something that we knew we could take that 20 40 50 whatever towards debt Mm -hmm. and naturally my immediate response is because i want her to you know she wants to buy something i want her to have it sure. naturally mm-hmm. and at the end of the day i would be like you know if you want it buy it and then we'd sit there and stare at each other and be like what would dave say <laughs> <laughs> we, would, we would be like we would we would get down and kind of a well i'm tired i don't want to do this anymore and we would be like what would dave say like what would dave do at this point <laughs> and i think that kind of kept us going a lot and um, also i mean it's like this past weekend I had a funeral I had to go to. My Mm -hmm. uncle passed away in Hernando, Florida, so we Mm -hmm. drove there and back. Mm -hmm. And the 10-hour drive back, I can promise you, we had 10 hours of Dave Ramsey in the car. Oh, my gosh. We did. I don't even want to be in the car with 10 hours. (laughs) (laughs) And it it also took a lot of prayer, too. A lot of prayer. Mm -hmm. Good for you guys. A lot of trust, you know, God telling us. Yeah. So you, know, you did it all off the podcast or the Total Money Makeover book or we, Financial Peace University We or did what? Financial Peace mm-hmm. University as oh, well. Oh, you did? We did it um, in our home. We didn't do the class, okay. um, I think, well, during the, the pandemic. I mean, well, yeah, we did. The online, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and so we didn't, during the pandemic, most of, mostly is when we watched it. Sure. Um, but that really helped us to kind of figure out yeah. our direction and where we need to go. I'm so proud of y'all. Thank you. Y'all are amazing. <laughs> what a great couple. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. You just really, you got the right spirit on you. You're going to be able to do anything you want to do. You're on your way to being Baby Steps Millionaires before you know it now that you hit this stride Thank so you. very very well done we got a copy of uh, the legacy journey for you to celebrate that next chapter and a copy of total money makeover for you to give away to somebody help get them started because you've been talking about this you can't shut up about no, it i actually can't. gave um i gave the total money makeover book to a co-worker of mine she was struggling ah. and uh, when i gave it to her she did like what anybody else would do even i've done it put the book aside yeah i asked her i said have you read the book and she said no i haven't read it yet i said okay 
And I'd come back next day. Hey, have you picked up the book yet? She says no. And so finally I met her at work one day and she said, hey, I wanted to tell you something. I said, what's that? She said, that book that you and Carol gave me? Mm -hmm. I said, yes. She said, me and my husband were having a a struggle, a fuss over money. Mm -hmm. We don't have any money right now. And I said, okay. And she said, I prayed to God and asked him to help me. And she said, God told me I gave you a book. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys, count it down. $80,000 paid off in 23 months, making 58 to 108. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, two, one. one. We're We're (laughs) debt-free! I love it. Woo! I already gave you a book. (laughs) Wow. That'll preach. This is The Ramsey Show. was launch day on Ken Coleman's new book, From Paycheck to Purpose. They were shipped to your mailbox if you'd ordered one. If you haven't gotten one yet, you can get it now. We'll ship it to you immediately. The clear path to doing work you love. And then yesterday, we released pre-sale on the first book I have done in eight years. It is called Baby Steps Millionaires, How Ordinary People Built Extraordinary Wealth and How You Can Too. It's all about step-by-step how to exactly become a millionaire. And I prove to you, without, without, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you, that you, I'm talking to you, that you can do this. That's pretty cool. It's not out of reach. It's doable. So if you want to pre-order, this book actually comes out January the 11th, but it went on sale, on pre-sale yesterday. When you pre-purchase a Ramsey book, we typically bribe you to buy it early by giving you a whole bunch of goodies, and this is no exception. Baby Steps Millionaire audio book and e-book is included in the $20. The Legacy Journey audiobook and ebook is included in the $20. The Baby Steps Millionaires live stream event in January is included in the $20. A Ramsey Smart Tax tax filing is included for free in the $20. And a 30 day free trial for Ramsey Plus is included. In the twenty dollars, it's over a hundred, almost two hundred dollars worth of stuff included when you buy a twenty dollar book now. That's pretty cool. So be sure and check all of that out. Danielle is with us in Philadelphia. Hi, Danielle. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi there. Hi. What's up? So a little over a year ago, I married my longtime boyfriend, and we're not young. We're late forties, early fifties, and we still have two houses now. A year later, because his house is an hour and a half away from my job. I spend about $240 a month in gasoline going back and forth. I don't do it every day. How far is your house from his job? um, Maybe two hours. So you guys work work two hours apart? Yes. That's wild. (laughs) His, His... his job is actually an hour and a half from his house as well, but he's willing to make that sacrifice. I, I'm i not. I think, you, I think it's cray-cray. Cray. I think you yeah, need to I, sell I, both I'm these houses you. and buy a house close to your jobs. Well, I agree with that. However, I have been in the mindset lately of, well, perhaps maybe I could look for a job closer. But my dilemma is that I have been working in the school district for 25 years as a custodial supervisor, and I make about $68,000 a year. My concern is going someplace else and not making that kind of money. I work my way up to where I am now. There's also another reason I, I keep my house because I have extended family also living in this house right now. Why? But, 
Um, my daughter had two young children, and she got a divorce and was only making about $13 an hour. So she had a hard time maintaining anything. And um, So you're paying a just, house payment for her? Correct. So when's she going to get on her feet? Well, she just got a promotion. Uh, she started last week, and um, it should bump her up to about $20 come next yeah. month. Okay. Well, so we need, you need a plan time, for her to be on her own, and you to sell that house, and you guys ought to sell the house that you live in, and you ought to move closer to both of your jobs. This is tough. Why? His job, he, he's making over 100000 so and he's just a bus driver in New York City. So, um, okay, so hold on. So I got to jump in. I'm going crazy. So both of you make good money and you both are assuming that you can't do anything else. So I want to, I want to frame what you've been doing a little differently. You're not okay. just a supervisor of custodians in a education system. You are a leader of people in a specific area. You're a leader. Oh, it's true. Oh, it's absolutely true. Well, listen, I'm to me. the queen around here. I know you are. And here's the deal. You got a lot of experience. I just heard some sass come out. We're in the hottest job market in the history of the United States and you have something to offer years and years of experience of leading people that are in uh, you know the traditional custodial roles and things of that nature there's a lot of options for you out there I would also say we have the greatest need in the history of the United States in the area of drivers whether it be uh, your traditional 18 wheelers or other deli- we have a supply chain problem and I saw it, an article just last week there's a need right now in the united states daniel for eighty thousand truck drivers if he's driving a bus in manhattan he can drive something else you guys have got to get outside of this mindset that we can't make what we make or more somewhere else because i don't believe that's true and you at least owe it to yourselves to do the research yeah investigate see what else is out there I mean, you're like, there's only one kind of spaghetti, but you've never been to more than one restaurant. (laughs) That's right. I mean, go check out some spaghetti restaurants, kiddo. Go look at the jobs that are on the plate out there and see what's happening. You have a lot of experience and skill to offer. And not to mention you're the queen. That's right. Well, that that comes, the royalty (laughs) part should go a long way. I like that. Yeah. And and here's the other thing. A house is a stupid house. Yeah. I ain't driving an hour and a half for a stupid house. Oh, life's too short. Get you another stupid house. There are stupid houses on every corner. And, and this idea that, you know, I'm not, well, I've always lived, so what? Sell it. I am not driving an hour and a half over a job or a piece of real estate. All of these things can change. And we didn't even discuss the potential financial gain from those two houses. Yeah. You know, assuming what their, what their position is in them. Absolutely. we got to get daughter up and out so right. she can sell right. that other house. But still, oh, my gosh, y'all. There's a lot of stuff going on here, and um, you guys are holding on to the past so tightly you're not going to live well in the future. Yeah. The past job history, the past, I worked so hard to get here, so use that to go into something else. I've always lived here, so use that to get into something else. Don't hold on to the past so tight that you lose your future. All right, Jeff is with us in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Hi, Dave. Thanks so much for taking my call. I really appreciate your time. We're honored. How can we help? Well, I'm 56 years old, and uh, we're in baby step seven. And I heard you say something recently that got me to thinking, and that is that Social Security basically is a break-even, if that. And I was wondering what the advantages or disadvantages would be like if I were to take out my Social Security uh, as early as I can, 62, 65, whatever the age is, 62. and invest that money. Instead if you of take it at 62, 62 and invest it. it and don't touch it, you'll end up with more money. Yes, sir. That's what will happen. That, that's my question. Yeah, so the difference in what you get paid if you wait to 65 versus 62 would be made up for in the investment that you create by investing everything from 62 to 65. You take all that, put it in a lump sum, that lump sum will pay more than it would pay extra if you wait. Oh, and when you die, that money is in your estate. When you die with Social Security, it disappears. Magical government yeah. math. <laughs> yeah, it's just gone. Poof. Just like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Social Insecurity System gives you a negative rate of return. It is an absolute 
governmental disaster. Think DMV runs retirement program. Now you got it figured out, okay? This is what's going on. And, oh. and so, well, it was never designed to be a retirement program. It was designed to be a supplemental. Yeah, it's designed to be supplemental, and a whole bunch of people are living on it because we've raised a couple of generations now that think the government is so smart they're going to take care of you. And if you wait on the government to take care of you, your life is always going to suck. So he's right, just really smart to ask that question and say, I'm not going to count on social insecurity when I get to retirement because I'm going to have actually saved some of my own money. Oh, and when I do get the money from the government, I'll never get as much out as I have put in. That means you have a negative rate of return. You don't even get out as much as you put in unless you just live to 192, mm. you know? And so you're, you're, it's a negative rate of return. They are sucking the blood out of the American public continually with this disaster of a program. Nobody gonna do anything about it though, but I'll whine a little, it's good for me. Yeah, helps my blood pressure. Yeah. Ken Coleman, good show this hour, and uh, James Childs, good show this hour. Jenna on the phones, good job. This is The Ramsey Show. a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. This is the Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author and author of the brand new book, From Paycheck to Purpose, The Clear Path to Doing Work You Love, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Kelsey is with us in Connecticut. Hi, Kelsey. How are you? Hi, Dave. Hi, Ken. This is exciting. I wasn't expecting this today. Well, we're honored to have you. How can we help? Um, I have a career question. So my boss has just asked me if I wanted to take over her small business. It's a gym. I'm a personal trainer. But I was actually planning to join the Air Force in the next year. And now I I just feel lost. Like, I don't know what opportunity to do. Oh, well, this is a fun place to be in. Uh, but I think we've got to simplify this. So your head and heart were totally focused on going into the Air Force for a future there. And when your boss hits you with this, it felt really good, didn't it? It felt nice that she would trust you enough. And, and it felt very nice, correct? Yeah. 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 After, it up. <laughs> yeah, good. But after that wore off and you begin to really wrestle with, well, wait a second, I, I think I was heading over here. What was your heart telling you right before you made this phone call? Which way were you leaning? Because I know you were leaning one way. Yeah, so I've really been leaning towards the Air Force. I've I've actually been thinking about that since last um, last March. I've just been like head and heart in there. I just couldn't Fantastic. do it sooner because of medical reasons. Good. But, um, so here's the I, deal. I just, so here's the deal. <laughs> are you worried about letting your boss down or are you worried maybe what others might say about turning this on paper, really amazing opportunity to run a business? What's really making you question what you know you want to do? That's what you have to answer right now. What is, what is causing the doubt about the military decision? Um, it's a woman's gym, and mm-hmm. I'm afraid that if I don't take it over, it's going to close, and I just care about the members a lot. Got it. Okay. That's amazing. Now, Kelsey, you got to be careful here to not misinterpret what is a really good beautiful heart. You're a good person and you have built relationships with those women. You care about them. You've invested in them. And if you're not careful, that false guilt 
is going to turn into resentment. If you were to do this and take this all for the right heart reasons, you will be delaying and maybe completely moving on from the thing that you know you're supposed to do. And I'm telling you that will eventually turn into resentment and you have no reason to feel guilt about not taking this business. Those women will find other places to work out. You didn't open it. You didn't open it. And it's not your responsibility to take care of their physical life. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it makes it makes a lot of sense. I think like I talked to my family about it. And of course, my family is just going to tell me to do what, you know, what I should do. But I, I just needed like an honest, yep. not family oriented opinion to yep. kind of steer me in the right direction. Let's refocus for just a moment. Tell me in 30 seconds or less from your heart what the future is because you're moving into the Air Force. What's that look like and why are you doing it? Um, the opportunity to travel, meet a lot of new people, mm-hmm. go different places and um, just serve our country, which is something I've been thinking about for a while. That's that's all you need to focus on. There's no guilt here. You do what you believe yeah. you're supposed to do. There's no guilt. Those ladies are going to be fine. One of them yeah. can take it and run it. Yeah. <laughs> you're free, Kelsey. That would... Do it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the call. Very thank good. you for being willing to serve our country. You're a great American. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Well done. All right. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Tyler's in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Hi, Tyler. How are you? Good. How are you, Dave? Better than I deserve. What's up? So um, my main question is, so I'm in the military right now, and what I'm kind of struggling with is whether or not I should uh, purchase a home while I'm on active duty or wait until I transition to the reserves. Um, right now, that looks like a six-year timeline. Um, just to give you some stats, I have, I have no debt. I have about $300,000 invested um, with a TSP, two Roth IRAs, and a taxable brokerage account. Good for you. Um, yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> How much is in the brokerage I account? About, I have about a hundred and ninety thousand in there, I believe. Way to go! All right. And how how often will they move you in during the next six years while you're still active duty? So I'm in yeah I'm in Fort Bragg right now in Fayetteville, and mm-hmm. I will move in about three years. Mm-hmm. And I eventually, uh, after my six year, want to transition to the reserves I got and go to where my parents. Yep. Yeah. So you don't need to buy. And it's not because well, you don't have okay, the money. Yeah, you have, you have the okay. money, but the problem is you're going to be moving. And you're in an area that the uh, the properties are largely military properties. And so you've got a lot of properties coming on the market because they're always moving people. And uh, it's a little tougher to move a property in one of these military towns. Agreed? Oh, I, I agree. Oh, I absolutely agree. That That's what I was thinking, too, because uh, my parents actually just recently moved to Nashville and um, knowing how the housing market is there, me and my wife are trying to decide whether or not to just keep investing and in piling cash and then yes. have a ginormous yes. down payment. Yes. And then buy, yeah, one, buy once you've settled into a place. Mm-hmm. Once you've settled into wherever it is you're settling into, uh, and it's probably after your military career when you move into the reserves, after your active duty career. And thanks for your service yeah. because you're moving so often that you the house is not going to go up enough in value and it's hard to sell them sometimes. And you can get stuck with properties everywhere you've been stationed. And so when you're moving every two to three years, almost always it's better off to rent and just pile up some cash over here for when you settle in. Now, some branches of the military, some jobs in the military, after a while in the career, you will settle in and be in one location even while active duty for a long time. If you're going to be there a while, like five years plus, then, yeah, you start talking about buying. But most of you guys and gals are moved every two to three years, and most of these markets do not support enough turnover and do not support enough price increase to justify buying when you're only holding two to three years. You'll lose money on the transaction if you can sell it, or you'll get stuck with the thing and end up with rental properties dotted all over the nation, and you don't want to do that. So, But again, thank you for your service as well. Yeah, His theme is one of my favorite scenes from Braveheart. Or the the English are thundering down the cavalry on Wallace and his men, and he says, "Hold, hold, <laughs> hold, 
hold, and that's going to be a great position when you get out. Exactly right. Exactly right. I love it. This is the Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. of year when some people get all stressed out about money. It's called Christmas. The gifts, the travel expenses, the extra food, the bills, oh, and life still has to go on. But what if money was something that you never had to fret about, stress about, worry about again? What if Christmas was actually, like, enjoyable and stuff? <laughs> well, you'd need a plan to cause that to happen, and we can show you how to do it. It's called Financial Peace University. This is the place where we teach you how to handle money, how to get out of debt, how to build wealth, how to be outrageously generous, how to live on a budget, how to live on a plan. It's the class you should have been made to take back when you were in high school, but back then nobody made you take it. Financial Peace University and our premium version of Every Dollar, the world's best budgeting app, goes with Financial Peace University when you become a Ramsey Plus member. It gives you access to all of this stuff and much more. If you want a free trial of Ramsey Plus to try all this out, go to RamseySolutions.com slash Ramsey Plus. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. That means even if you mismeasure or you pick the wrong color, they'll remake your window blinds for free. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. It's an incredible American company. Blinds.com. Calm. Use Ramsey to get the best deal. Today's question comes from Daniel in Maine. I got a job at a major law firm after my first year of law school. I am now a third year law student and the firm I work for wants to hire me after graduation. I would like to own my own law firm someday and feel like gaining experience in a smaller firm would be better to prepare me to achieve that goal. Would I be crazy to reject a higher paying job at a respected law firm to pursue my dreams? You wouldn't be crazy, but I, I want to challenge this thought that you saying no to this bigger firm uh, and going to work for a smaller firm is going to somehow prepare you to run your own firm better because you picture it being a smaller firm. I actually think that I would consider what you could learn from working for a bigger firm and understanding the complexities of the business. And I think that's just as relevant as you would scale down uh, and eventually running your own firm. So I, I don't know that this is the actual right narrative that, well, uh, if I work for a smaller firm, that's going to better prepare me to run my own small firm one day. I think leadership is leadership. 
organization is organization, and I think you'd learn in some ways more from a larger firm and getting to know their leaders and those partners and learning from them, taking the higher pay. And then if you feel like that you can get something unique from a smaller firm, let's move to that eventually. So I wouldn't assume this is the right choice. Either way, you've got to learn how to run a business. That's correct. And so the more time you spend being a lawyer Mm -hmm. and the less time you spend on actually building business acumen, regardless of which location you're in, Mm -hmm. um, that's going to take away from your dream. So your dream is you need to become a great lawyer, Mm -hmm. uh, but also learn how to run a law firm, the business practices of that. So uh, I I think you could get the the business acumen, like Ken is saying, either place. You've just got to be very intentional about it. You're going to run into the dichotomy that anyone that has a, a specific discipline or skill runs into. Uh, If you paint houses and you do a really good job and you want to be a painter uh, and you want to own your own painting contracting firm, running a painting contracting firm is different than painting. That's a running a business. That's That's a different set of skills. And so the more you paint Mm -hmm. houses, the less you will learn about running a business and the more chances of you failing running that business become. So anybody that's a maker, anyone that's a doer, like a lawyer, even a doctor, yep. the more time you spend actually being a doctor and not actually running the practice, they're two different things. Yep. And you can't make enough to out-earn your stupidity. So you've got to learn these business skills That's correct. regardless of which place you are. And the, law, the smaller firm could eat you up as a lawyer and take up all your time lawyering uh, as much as the larger firm does. So yep. you just got to be intentional about wherever you are learning the business skills. Yeah. And so I think I'm with Ken. I think you take the higher paying job. I do too. And I, I, I just think that's better because there's some complexities at the larger firm that you're going to learn about. Amanda's in Nashville. Hi, Amanda. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you? Better than I deserve. What's up in your world? Um, not a lot. I just had a quick question. Um, I wanted to preface by saying that I do follow your plan, but I've been trying to diagnose the medical condition for the past year. So I do have a larger savings than you would approve of. Um, my question is, should I refinance my house to pay off my student loans or should I sell it, pay off the mortgage, pay off the student loans and then rent until I can buy again? It's my husband and I. Uh, okay. It's a lot going on here. How much is your student loan debt? Uh, 137. Whoa. What's your degree in? Uh, my husband is a chiropractor. I'm a medical assistant. Okay. And what does he make? He makes around 110, I think. Is it your student loan or his? It's his. Oh, okay. <laughs> he makes 110. Mm-hmm. All right. And, um, interesting. And, and you make how much? Um, I make somewhere around 30, but the household last year, I think we brought home 122, if not mistaken. Mm-hmm. And you have a hundred it's gone up this year. And you have $130,000 in student loan debt. Yeah, 137. 137. Okay. And 63 in what, savings what, altogether. Uh, so, so you not being able to work is not going to, because the your income is a the smaller portion of your household income, right? And so I, um, is it I'm your med- you work. that have a medical condition or him? It's him. Oh, it's him. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, so you yeah, guys we're are... both able to work. So you're piling the money up, because waiting on what this diagnosis for him might be? What, what, yeah, what, what has he got? Different... What, what's going on with him? Um, I'd rather not say. It's just uh, something that we've had to do a couple of diagnostics on in the past year. Okay, well, depending on how debilitating it is and how sure the diagnosis is correct is, uh, mm-hmm. the more debilitating and the more sure you are, the more I'm just selling the house. Mm-hmm. I'm not refinancing mm-hmm. and borrowing your way out of the debt either way. Yeah, our thought process there was that we'd be able to lower the interest rate if we no, just put it not, all it's like it's not an interest rate out. problem. It's a debt problem. Okay. And you have a huge pile of debt. So if you sold your home, would it pay off the student loan and the home? Oh, yeah, everything. And you'd be free. Okay. Yes. So if he's not going to be able to earn that kind of income to be able to pay off the student loan by being a chiropractor that he took out getting chi- to, that he took out to become a chiropractor because of this medical diagnosis, yeah, you need to sell the house. 
to reset and to get yourself positioned to weather this health storm. Okay. Now, the, o- the other question is this, um, or the other thing to bring up, and because I, I, you intentionally are, I've got an incomplete picture because you're uh, concerned about privacy, and I, that's okay, all right? But let me, mm-hmm. give, let me give you two other pieces of information that might enter into this. When is, are these uh, federal student loans? Uh, yes, they are right now. Okay. Well, they need to stay federal student loans. Because if he were to pass away, they are forgiven. Okay. Well, it's not anything that serious. It's okay. just more of a, yeah, okay. it's a... If he were be, to like, be declared permanently disabled. That's not going to happen either. It's, okay. So it's um, not that like extreme. An, okay. That's good yeah, news. Yeah, no, nothing okay. extreme. <laughs> good. Okay. So you're going to pay them. So the only question is, how long is he going to be with you? And you're gonna, you, just have, you guys have to assess this. The, the longer he's going to be out of work or have hugely diminished income, the more I'm going to lean towards selling the house. But if it's a one-year thing and you want to hold on, that's fine. Hold on. Put the student loans on hardship deferral. Come back from the mess and get the income back up and attack the student loans and get rid of them. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I think the other factor here is how expensive could the treatment be? I felt like there was a little hint towards that, and that's why I'd still sell the house. It sets you free. you got plenty of cash, plenty of freedom, and income to be able to pay for the treatment. Well, and you come back, and you're that's making right. you're making a hundred something right thousand dollars again yeah. after the, the other side of this, and just buy another house. I agree. That'd be an okay thing to do too. This is the Ramsey Show. On baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. Solutions on the debt-free stage. Marsha and Cameron are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Great. Great. How you doing? Thank you. Welcome. Where do you guys live? Uh, Fort Branch, Indiana, just outside of Evansville. All right. Well, we got to get started with, I love the (laughs) t-shirts. Be (laughs) the third pig. The back is even better. What's it say on the back? We're debt free. <laughs> That's right. Brick house. Be the pig in the brick house. The third pig. I love it. Way to go, you guys. You're prepared for the big bad wolf. Excellent. All right. How much debt have you paid off? <clears throat> uh, we paid off uh, $120,000. Very good. How long did that take? Uh, about three years once we really got working together. Okay. And what was your range of income during that three years? Um, 90 up to 130. Cool. What do y'all do for a living? Uh, I manage a home improvement center. Mm-hmm. And I'm the founder and executive director of a nonprofit benefiting kids in foster care. Oh, good. Very good. Great. Good job, you guys. Okay, what kind of debt was the $120,000? Well, we were <clears throat> very normal. We had uh, student loans, credit cards, medical debt, and uh, most recently our house. Wow, Whoa. paid off the house! Yes, we did. Super Woo! weird. <laughs> I'm looking at weird people. Looking at weird third pigs. I like it. So, uh, what's this house worth? Uh, two twenty-five ish. That's so fun. Your house is paid for, dude. It feels weird. Yeah, it's just strange. <laughs> I love it. The grass feels better. <laughs> Under your feet. Yeah. yeah. Ken and I have a good friend down in Atlanta. Just sent us a video oh, this yeah. morning. He paid off his house, showed us hitting the hitting submit on the computer, and then you see their feet out in the grass, so, like your all's YouTube picture just a second ago here. <laughs> yeah, the grass feels different under your feet when you yeah. pay for it. Way to go, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So very cool. All right, there's a story here. How long have you been married? 
uh, 13 years. Okay. So three years ago, you got serious. Yes. And you said you, you did qualify. You said when we finally got together and both of us were doing it and we got serious, it went zoom, zoom. Tell us what happened and tell us how you got plugged into Ramsey. Well, <clears throat> our story goes back probably 10 years. Um, I'm probably the, the textbook example of, of how not to do things. Um, I stumbled upon your radio show just driving one day and um, – Kind of dabbled in it, didn't really, you know, go full force into the baby steps or anything. But I started listening to you, and, and uh, your principles made a lot of sense. So um, I started doing some of the, the steps and doing some of the things, and um, my mistake was I did not bring her in on it. So um, although I was making a little bit of progress, uh, it, it was really creating a pinch point and a um, stress in our marriage because we weren't operating off of the same page and I'm over here trying to do one thing and she's doing another thing and it, it just it wasn't working out so well and a little bit of backstory to that is when we um, we lived in Kokomo Indiana and it was a 2008 during the, mm -hmm. the housing crash or flip or whatever it was and um, we he's gonna tell you a little bit more about that but but I guess what I was trying to say was uh, Dave Ramsey was not a good word. It was what would you yeah, say, yeah. a cuss word in our, our family. Yeah, very <laughs> um, much. And I was I was the free spirit that wanted to do whatever I wanted to do. And I was I, even though we talked about what you were the plan, I was I was not having it. No, not at all. So what happened that caused you to get together and decide to do it together? <clears throat> um, well, going back near to the beginning of our story, uh, near there anyway, um, we were upside down on a house um, by a lot. Um, and, uh, we got, we, we moved, uh, my job moved us. So, um, we were in a position where we were way underwater on our house. And, um, fortunately my, my parents have always been a, a big help to us. And, uh, my dad loaned me some money, about $20,000 just to be able to sell our house and, you know, write the check to get out of it. Um, and then, you know, fast forward, we were going to pay him back. It was a loan. And uh, that very next Christmas, after Christmas dinner, uh, my dad sat us down and said that his present to us was we didn't owe him that money back anymore. Wow. So um, that really did it for me. That was kind of my why, because, you know, it really got me thinking, you know, if I <clears throat> ever want to be in a position to be able to bless my kids and my family like that, then I really need to do something different than I've been doing. So um, I don't know really what was it that three years ago really put us on it together. So uh, another important fact in it, 10 years ago, we actually owed $216,000. So we came a long way as we, as we marched forward uh, to three years ago. Um, but three years ago, he he was just so excited about your principles, and he was, he start, he started teaching FPU classes, and uh, and and sitting in that class, he invited me to really be hands on and a part of it, and and I had started listening to him and your principles, and and I got excited myself, and I became the I don't want to sit at this table and talk about this, I don't like that name in my house, I want to buy whatever I want to like, come on guys, you can do this, and um and really the 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 where we got gazelle intense was um during the pandemic, uh, just a little over, I guess it's been like 15 months now, but my dad was, um, he was dying and, uh, he did not leave a good family tree as far as finances. And, and we were really left with a, a huge mess. And then I have my own, um, medical issues that, that I was told that I was at big high risk complications from COVID. And I just, it just really was an eye opener that I have two amazing kids. And what if something happened to one of us in this time? How would I, what would that mean for my family? And, um, and that was it. Like it, I was sold. I didn't care from then on else if we were eating rice and beans, being the rice, we were getting everything paid off. And so I called him at work one day and I said, let's do this. We can do this. And we're here. We did this, and yeah. we're, we're grateful. And he's like, who are you, and what have you done with my wife? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, you guys. Yeah, I, I just want to know. I mean, obviously, we heard the whole backstory. I want to know, you get really fired up, right? And so now we've got big motivators. Yeah. What was the hardest part once you actually got into it? Because there's that initial high. This must be done, right? Conviction. And at what point did you start to struggle or did you struggle? And what did you do to get out of that? Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, I think the biggest thing was it was so different. You know, we'd never 
it was the first time in our marriage that, you know, we had really been on the same page and focusing on the same common goal. And uh, there's unbelievable power in that. You know, we did it for so long. Um, you know, I, I, we were talking on the way down here. I felt like I was, you know, repairing holes in the boat while she's on the other end drilling bigger ones. And, and, um, you know, so just once we really grasped the concept and started working together, it was so different than anything we'd ever done that it took us a while to kind of adjust to that and getting accustomed to using a budget and following the every dollar budget. But, Mm. you know, really once we started on that same page together it was game on very cool I, awesome. he i used to be the kind of person that i'd get a couple hundred dollars from a bonus or something and i'd be like oh he didn't know and i'm shoving that in the drawer because i'm gonna go shopping uh and he'd see it when it showed up on amazon right on my front door or wherever that was from um and it just became you know what we have extra money let's do something intentional with it let's be intense and mm. and it was it was really just getting on the same page and actually i was sharing this this story with somebody a couple of weeks ago about being able to be on this stage and share such a, a a big win for our our family and changing the family tree and um and i said you know what i think another big motivator was knowing this is not like something that somebody else can do. We can do this. Everyday people yeah. can do it if you Amen. if you do it on purpose. And um, and I have to give a plug to my son here. Let's get the kids in. What are their okay. names and ages? Uh, Jackson and Harmony. Okay. So cool. J- Jackson. Tw- 12 and 7. 12 and 7. All right. So Jackson is, is I think he was born a nerd like his dad. Uh-huh. Um, and we gave him the give, save, spend pigs uh, yeah. many years ago. And yeah. he was really diligent about giving and saving, giving and him. saving. And um, he is going to be 13 in February. And by um, his 13th birthday, he is going to have a Toyota Camry paid for with less miles Whoa. than my vehicle. And wow. a $3,000 savings account. Well Go done, Jackson. young man. Very impressive. <laughs> All right, Marsha, Cameron, Jackson, and Harmony, Harmony from Evansville, Indiana. 120000 paid off in three years, making 90 to 130 Be the third pig. House and everything. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt-free! <laughs> wow, what a complete transformation. And the reluctant spouse goes in to help with Financial Peace University. Whoop, whoop. There it is. Catches it. Catches the disease. Catches the disease. (laughs) This is the Ramsey Show. Coleman Ramsey personality is my co-host today. This is the Ramsey Show. He's the number one best-selling author, and his brand new book is out, From Paycheck to Purpose, The Clear Path to Doing Work You Love. Patty is with us in Boise, Idaho. Hi, Patty. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. You had a call a few minutes ago that piqued my interest, and I'm trying to understand. Um, my husband is losing his job on Friday because he won't take the COVID shot and his company is firing everybody that will not do it. They're not doing exemptions or anything. Hmm. He is almost 62. He'll be 62 in just a couple of months. And we're trying, I'm, I'm 51 or 51. So I'm a little bit younger than he is. How long has he been with that company? Uh, seven years. Wow. Okay. Um, and it's been a lot of, it's been a lot of going back and forth. They kept coming back and forth and saying, you're going, you're not, you're going, you're not. And finally today, they just said, no, you're going like everybody that refuses is just gone. So what we're trying to figure out is somebody asked you about early retirement with social security. And one of the things that he and I wondered is, would it be better for him to take early retirement? Because we understand that investing that would be better, but he's not ready to quit work. And I was under the impression that if you took early Social Security, that they ding you if you are working. Correct. And okay, so you don't get a lump sum. That's why. No, it's not a lump sum. It's monthly income. 
Okay. I, I you get, if you start your Social Security at 62, you get a smaller monthly income than if you started at 65. But then if he continues to work, don't they gain that Social Security? Exactly. They will. Yeah. Okay. So probably don't in take, our don't, case. If he's going to go back to work, don't take Social Security. Okay. Okay. I, he would not be happy not not working. He's still got years where he's going to want to be productive. He's not going to want to just. Well, I would hope so. He's just a spring chicken. Well, he, he, and, uh, we're the, sa- we're the same age, so there you go. Yeah, no, and he loves what he does. I mean, you know, most people go to work and they come home and leave their work at work. He's, he's an inventor and an engineer, and that's what he loves, and so he does it all the time. So he is not really ready to just give that up. And so hmm. we weren't sure if taking early retirement. I, I, from the call, it sounded like the guy was going to take a one lump sum with Social Security. No, no, thought, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a lump sum. They don't offer okay. a lump sum. If they did, I would have already taken it. Okay. Okay. Well, that helps. Thank you. Thank Early you. and often as I can get money from the government that is mine that I've given them, and I'm not even going to get it all back. I would take all I could get as fast as I could get it because yeah. uh, they've been screwing me for years, and so I'd be happy to take some of it back. And that sentence you just uttered is a total fantasy. <laughs> oh, I know. I didn't say it would happen. I just said it'd be nice. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. We'd all be doing that. Yeah. Oh Jeez. boy. <laughs> no, just, uh, I know. We'll turn into uh, grumpy just, old man here. Move quickly. on, move That's on. Right. Molly's in St. Louis. Hey, Molly, how are you? Good. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, we, well, I just feel dizzy. <laughs> so we have a farm. Uh, we have a rental property, and my husband has a generator business. Um, and our money. I feel like our money's in a good place. Um, but the farm operation is a little tricky to wrap our brains around, like how to get it to where it's debt free, but also like the motivation behind it. Because like if you, if you, so we use an operating loan while the crops are being put out and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it gets paid back and uh, gets paid down to zero. But mm-hmm. Um, if we, so if we buy, if we save to buy land, you can't deduct that, uh, purchase. So you have to pay tax on anything. What's your question? If, how do we get rid of our operate? I'm not really sure. Honestly, how do we get rid of our operating loan? Uh, like what's the motive behind that when we would, have to pay so much in tax to build up enough money to to have the cash to do that. Okay. Um, you understand a tax deduction is not a tax credit. So the operating loan does not benefit you for taxes except for 25% of the interest that you pay. There's almost zero tax benefit for an operating loan. Did you know that? Um, I thought our I thought what we paid on that was part of our farm expense. No, not for not not, not the principal, land, only the interest. For, okay, only the interest. Okay, and so let let's put. How big is the operating loan typically? Um, our limit is two twenty five. The max what we've it, ever done is like one sixty. Okay, so it, let's just use some crazy numbers. Okay. Let's say okay. you did a hundred and sixty thousand, and it cost you eight uh, percent of that, and so it cost you uh, or ten percent of that. It wouldn't be that much. What's your interest rate? Four percent. Okay, four percent. All right, and so it costs you what sixteen thousand? It costs you about four thousand dollars in interest. Yeah. No, it costs you about. Six thousand, seven thousand dollars in interest. Okay, well, the seven thousand dollars in interest is all that's deductible. Nothing else is deductible. Correct. Okay. Now, the seven thousand dollar tax deduction, if you're in a thirty percent tax bracket, saves you two thousand one hundred dollars in taxes. Okay, so the so you're screwing around with one hundred and sixty thousand dollars for a two thousand dollar benefit and calling that sophisticated. That's not sophisticated. No, I think the issue is more. We're not. It's not really that to get the deduction. It's, it's the, what you said. It's like. Okay, so then I misspoke. Okay. Um. So if I, in order for us to build up, like it's. 
you have to pay really taxes on $160,000 worth of income to have $160,000. Yes. Well, that's how life works, and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that's what you need to do I, to get out of the operating okay. loan business. Because all you got to have is one bad crop and you're bankrupt. Hello? Yeah, I'm... Is that wrong? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, no, I'm trying to just wrap my brain around because I'm... Okay. You're so here's what you need to do. Here's it, what, so. you, what kind of profit do you make in a year on the farm, do you think? Um, this last year, we'll, uh, after we did everything, we'll have like 100000 okay. income. And, and so so let, let's pretend and let's say, okay, you need 160. So let's say over four years, we're going to take 40000 a year and we're going to borrow $40,000 less each year. Because the $100,000 in profit you pay taxes on, you don't have a choice. Okay, yeah. so after you pay taxes on your hundred thousand dollars, I want you to put forty thousand dollars aside each year for four years. That will equal one hundred sixty thousand dollars. Now you are your own line of credit because you actually have some freaking money. And I'm curious, really quick, Molly. I'd love Dave to hear this. I want to hear this. How much is the rental property worth? What do you owe on it? Uh, we don't owe anything on the rental property. What's it worth? Probably worth mm, four fifty. Yeah. What kind of profit does the generator business make? So, <laughs> real quick. Generally, we take home five thousand a month. Oh, okay. Okay. So sixty thousand on that. So you're making one hundred sixty thousand dollars a year. You got a four hundred fifty thousand dollars rental property. If I were in your shoes, I'd sell the rental property that's, and fund my operating loan. That's what I'm thinking. You're one hundred percent debt free. You're operating the business debt free. You're going to increase your. You're going to decrease your hassle because you're dealing with a renter, a generator business, and a farm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're going to decrease the craziness where you're chasing your tail. When you started the call, you talked about how confused you were, and um, and you're getting rid of the debt, which lowers the stress of the situation, and you're paying cash for everything on the farm from this day forward, and you're paying cash for everything in the generator business from this day forward, and you never fall for the tax deduction myth again, because when you fall for the tax deduction myth and you call that smart, really what you're saying out loud is, I love trading dollars for quarters. Because that's what a tax deduction does. It trades a dollar for a quarter. And you don't want to trade dollars for quarters. So don't stay in debt for the tax deduction. And don't stay in debt because you think you have to. You don't have to. Effectively, you are borrowing against your rental property once a year for an operating loan. Mm -hmm. That's what the balance sheet says. It's technically not a loan on the rental property. I got that. But effectively, that's what you're doing. Yeah. So you can clean up your whole life pretty quickly. If I were in your shoes and I wanted to be a farmer, I'd sell the rental property. If I didn't want, if I wanted to be a rental landlord and not be a farmer, I'd sell the farm. Yeah. This is the Ramsey Show. Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. His new book is out and on the bookshelves and at RamseySolutions.com, flying out the door. It's called From Paycheck to Purpose, The Clear Path to Doing Work You Love. So if you want to talk about career and jobs this hour, well, Mr. Ken Coleman is here to help. And of course, I'm here to help you with your life and your money. We started pre-sale on my first book in eight years. Wow. Yesterday. I didn't intend. How's that feel? 
been a long time since you put a book out. Feels old. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I, basically, I've been putting your all's books out for a I year. I know. So I've now, now you're on the cover. We now have ten Ramsey personalities and wow. putting putting out books on ten Ramsey personalities and uh, supporting and pushing out those yep. brands and helping those has been my job for eight or ten years. And so the last book I did was actually with Rachel. So she and I did a uh, number one bestseller called Smart Money, Smart Kids. Um, and she was of my daughter, Rachel Cruz, is one of the Ramsey personalities. And so um, this one's uh, not got anybody's name on it but mine. And it's all about the people that have followed the baby steps and have become millionaires. And it's the proof text to prove to you that you can too. Not billionaires, millionaires have a $1 million net worth or greater. And that there's that that's you you would want more than that probably. That's not enough, maybe. I don't know. But it's a million. And it's a million more than most people got. Yeah. You're not so if you want to be a baby steps millionaire, we can show you how. And following the baby steps gets you there. And this is a uh, you know, truly a motivational book to show you exactly with the math, exactly with statistics, exactly what will happen with the arithmetic. If you follow this process, you will get there. And it also pretty much tears up anybody who tears anybody's butt up who says you can't do it. And so I spent a few chapters tearing up those butts. A little whack-a-mole in there? A little whack-a-mole. A uh-huh. little chapter. A little, <laughs> little uh, solve the objection to make the sale thing. So uh, people that tell you you can't win, I don't like those kind of people. So it's my job to tear their butt up. That's the thing. So um, it's what we do. So Baby Steps Millionaire is on sale now. It actually comes out January the 11th. If you pre-order it, you get all kinds of goodies, including e-books and audio books and $100 worth of stuff. So check it all out at RamseySolutions.com. Chad is in Minneapolis. Hey, Chad, how are you? Better than I deserve. How are you? Just the same, sir. What's up? So I've got a question. Um, my fiance and I have very different views on money. We're going to get married next next summer. Congratulations. Farm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, grew up on a farm, working, saving, you know, striving for a better life. It wasn't that I was destitute when I was growing up, but, you know, it was it was not always the easiest thing. Um, her mom had her, her my, my fiance's grandfather passed away, and her mom had inherited millions of dollars, uh, never had to work, and ended up raising nine kids on her own after her dad left. Um, and a, sort of abandoned the family, um, and then ended up using the money that she had inherited to manipulate the kids into doing things, into thinking the way that she did, doing things for her, but ultimately has left sort of a bad taste in her mouth with money. Um, how do I work with her to show her that money isn't intrinsically evil? Um, I am, I'm the breadwinner. I, I have a very good career. Um, you know, I, I make about 120. She makes 38. How do I, how do I work with her to show her that money's not bad? Hmm. How old are you guys? Uh, 36 and 38. Okay. Okay. Um, either one of you been married before? Both of us have actually. So we're, we're okay. combining. I've got four boys. She has two girls. Okay. Well, let me tell you some statistical things to think about, and these are things you can go over with her, okay? Um, One of the things you want to do, anytime you want to enter into anything, in business we would study, if you want to enter into marketing, we would study marketing and, and emulate best practices, find best practices, and find where the landmines are. We want to avoid the mine, landmines, keep from getting your leg blown off, right? And we want to emulate people who are winning. We want to copy the things that the people that are winning are doing. Agreed? Correct. Okay. So here's what you guys are facing. It's not insurmountable, by the way, but it is an uphill climb. You have three major strikes against your marriage before it even starts. You don't address these. I'll give you a high probability of failure. Okay. Number one. Her family upbringing was toxic. She comes from a highly dysfunctional family, number one. Hard to have relationships when you have come from a highly dysfunctional family unless you've dealt with it. Did I, did I misstate that? No. You okay, number two. That's, that's, you both have failed at marriage before. 
And if you have not healed through those failures and learned from those failures, um, you will replicate the exact same stupid crap again. High probability of failure if you do not deal with that. That's right. Number three, the number one cause of divorce in North America today, money disagreements, money fights, and money problems. And you're already having those. You well, have to solve all three, three of those fight. before the summer. <clears throat> and, and and to be honest, with you, so in in both of, both of our um, both of both of us chose to leave our marriages due to a lot of issues. Unfortunately, I, we we knew each other's um, exes, so we we saw it. There was a lot of people that saw it. Um, yeah, both wonderful. Both you actors. still both failed at marriage. Listen, dude, you got what I'm trying to tell you is you guys need a lot of one on one counseling, pre marriage counseling to deal with these three issues before you walk down the aisle. Otherwise, statistically, you have a very high probability of hitting the wall. Yeah. Don't miss this. I'm not trying to say you can't make it. I'm just saying, dude, there's landmines everywhere, and I'm trying to guide you through them. Yes. And you need a coach, a counselor that they can talk to the two of you that is excellent, that is world class. This is not two little puppies getting married, and they need some little pat on the hand pre-marriage counseling. You need to deal with divorce healing. You need to deal with her toxic upbringing because her mother's crazier than a freaking bean. Man, what you described to me is dangerous yeah. stuff. Control and stuff. then on top of that, you're in total disagreement and have different value systems about money and you boiled it down to she thinks money's evil that's not the problem here yep. that'll be one of 14 things that come up while y'all unpack this yeah chad i hope you're hearing this you need to pause this wedding date until this stuff gets fixed we didn't say not marry her we said pause well i don't and even need to pause it you just got to do the work between now and summer well i, I appreciate that dave it's very optimistic I, I think it's pause until we get healthy and on the same page of this and i'd say this she's going to have to see a desired future that you both agree on that money helps us get there that's yeah. eventually where you're going to have to get her if you can't agree about money you're not going to agree about life and you guys really do have some work to do to get ready for this marriage i think you can do it but you're not going to do it if you ignore it If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. heard that the real estate market is crazy what what are you talking about <laughs> nuts buyers out there i uh, think they gotta buy there's a line around the block multiple bids every stinking house listing is an auction i mean out of freaking control and mortgage interest rates are lower i don't know how they could get any lower they're gonna pay you to take a mortgage soon i think hey don't get me wrong a low rate's a good idea it's not a green light to do stupid stupid as in buying before you're debt free or with a zero down payment or just lining up and paying like way too much for something because you're out of control hey get your head out of the craziness for a second look at you and your situation are you debt free you have a good, strong down payment saved, preferably 20%. That'll avoid PMI, right? Can you really afford home ownership? Do you really want the responsibility? You know somebody's got to cut the grass. Hello. If and only if your answer is a big fat yes to all those questions, then buying a home is a really smart move for you. And it's easy to get caught up in all the crazinesses out there, which is why you need the facts. Go use our free mortgage calculator to figure out what you can actually afford with the mortgage options that are out there. Go to RamseySolutions.com, click Free Tools to check it out. 
free tools to check it out. Josh is with us in Greenville, South Carolina. Hey, Josh, what's up? Hello, sir. Gentlemen, thank you for your time in advance. Uh, my question is, I am selling my home back up in Indiana. It's set to close on the 30th, and uh, I have not heard this question yet. Uh, how do I keep myself from feeling like I've hit a jackpot and keep myself more along the lines of adulting? I am going to admit that I've been like Ramsey-ish along the way, but I do have plans to get my uh, debt paid off. And set that up is such a good fund. question. Yeah, that is very I, good. I, How much is yeah, the house I selling for, dude? Uh, I I asked for one thirty five, and I originally bought the home nine years ago, about eighty six. So I'm looking at roughly fifty something thousand dollars in your pocket, and you've never seen fifty thousand dollars in your pocket. Not in one lump sum, yeah. no sir. How old are you? I am thirty two. Okay. Good for you, man. Congratulations. Thank and that is a very, very mature, much. good, solid question to answer. How do, I, how do I be smart, wise, adult with $50,000 instead of a child that says, woohoo, I hit the lottery? Well, so I got a question. I'm going to add my question onto his question. It, it, there's got to be a psychology, and you've experienced it, where there is a rapid change in, in, in money, just period. It, what does it do to your head and heart? You know, the only way I've been able to work through it, and I have to work through it regularly because uh, sometimes my emotions still operate, um, you know, making yeah. one one jillionth of what I make now. Uh, and so, uh, I mean, we spend more on copier paper in Ramsey than I used to make in a year, you know. So uh, it's weird. It's an emotional sure. it's an emotional swing. So the way I do that is just, you know, John, Dr. John Deloney says facts are our friends. Yeah. And so uh, what I would tell you to do, Josh, is just write down a lot of facts. Mm. Facts are that emotionally 50000 feels like a lot of money, but actually the arithmetic on it is it's not much. Right. You know? And so, like, facts are I can buy this or this or this, but then I'd have nothing. Facts are I, I want to do this with it so that I can turn 50000 into 500000 over the next 10 years with the house buy or whatever it is. What are my facts, not my feelings? Feelings will lie to your butt. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And, and so that that's what you're fighting against, and that just means you're just like a, a real person because we all fight against that. But the feeling is like, oh, man, like, woohoo! I've hit the lottery. Yeah. But then the facts yeah. are I could fritter this away real quickly, and I really would end up with two ugly cars, and that's it, you know, yes. or something, you know? It would just be bad, and, and then you'd be mad at yourself for like a decade for the, having screwed this up. Yeah. And, and that's a Fact. Yes, sir. Those are facts. And, you know, it won't hurt to sit down at the computer and just write some of those things down. Like, write yourself a note that says, you know, hey, let's be a grown-up here. You know, I, I have a tendency. I could be a lottery winner and act like I'm in high school. And, but adults devise a plan and follow it. Children do what feels good. That's what I want to add, Josh. Yeah. While you're writing down what Dave asked you to write down, I want you to write down what your future looks like. What are you dreaming about? Yeah. Because, Dave, here's what's going on. You're absolutely right. Uh, feelings are always present focused. Exactly. Exactly. Plans Wis- are future wisdom, focused. Wisdom is an act of the will. Yeah, I, I want to think about it. Distance dude. vision is an act of the will. That's it. And I think the desired future, if you plan it out and then you say, where does this new found money, this 50000 how me. does it plug into yeah. that future? And what that does is that unplugs it from Friday night. 100%. Now we got discipline. It unplugs it from a visit to Target. <laughs> That's you know, right. Or it, hey, not, none of those things are car. none of these things are wise. Right. Because he could be tempted to buy a new car. He's got the cash. But wait yeah. a second. Or you, or you, al- or or you allocate years. two thousand of it to blow That's... to get it out of your system, and then it'll go. I'm going. I'm going to be wise with the other forty eight. I actually like that plan because it gets the celebration factor. Let's yeah. celebrate. This is a nice blessing. Yeah. But yeah. then let's be big boys and big girls. It doesn't hurt to allocate some of it to generosity as well. Yeah. But that that also helps. But the the. The, the big thing is is to actually do what you're doing with this phone call, mm-hmm. which is be intentional and be careful and be thoughtful, because where there is no vision, the people perish. Yeah. Dalton is with us in Carbondale, Illinois. Hey, Dalton, what's up? Hey, Dave, how are you? Better than I deserve, man. What's up in your life? Uh, I just turned 20, and um, 
I'm going to be honest, all throughout high school, I kind of was a knucklehead. I mean, I didn't say no. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that comes with the deal, dog. Ken, You're young. Ken, Ken was a knucklehead all the oh, way through high school, man. too. Man, I'm telling you. Don't, you. Not, man, I wasn't even a knucklehead. I was just an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, welcome to the human I, race. Uh, yeah, I um, got really bad grades and all that. and uh, Now I'm kind of looking more towards the future now that life has kind of hit me. Yeah. Um, I'm still living at home. I've got a paper route. I make about 20000 a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm thinking about going into the military. Mm-hmm. So they'll pay me to go to school mm-hmm. as well as um, I would like to serve my country. It would be, it'd be an amazing thing. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking about going into the police force. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty seamless to go from that mm-hmm. um, into a city police uh, where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't actually need a college education for it. Mm-hmm. But um, if it's paid for, you know, I uh, thought that I might as well take it. Mm-hmm. Um, but my main thing is my family isn't quite on board with me going into the Army. Why? Just because they're, they're very, very scared, um, mainly because... I'm not sure if I want to go active duty yet or not. Oh, they're just worried about your uh, safety. 100%. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. That as well as um, I didn't tell you I am uh, $17,000 in debt. I found you just a little too late. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I got into a $400 car payment. Okay, so, Galton, before I run out of time, what's your question, honey? Um, I was just wondering uh, what I should do as far as the military as okay. well as um, work my way out of debt in the meantime. Got it. Ken? Well, I, I got to tell you, I think I heard your heart here, and I think if you want to serve our country, I would not chase the military option just as an education fund. It's not a bad move. There's nothing moral about it. But I want you to decide, why do you really want to serve our country? Uh, and, and I think it's in that answer of being a police officer. You want to protect and serve. And so I say go. Uh, be sensitive to your parents. They're concerned about your safety. But I think you've got to do what your heart's telling you to do. And the good news is, is you can pay off that car loan. Uh, you're 20. You didn't find Dave and Ramsey Solutions too late. Uh, you can pay that off in no time. I mean, you're making 20 from a paper route. What if you went right Right now, in this market where people are looking for anybody with a pulse and they'll pay him $15 an hour, minimum wage, how can you go get another job, pay that $17,000 off really quickly, and then step into the military, serve your country, and then find a way to step into a police force and protect and serve your community? I think you got to do what you want to do. You're heading in the right way, young man. Um, just move slowly and make sure you spend a lot of time. Uh, beating up the recruiter for the best possible deal yeah, yeah. on what it is you're signing up for and that you get into a, an area of the military that's going to serve your long-term dreams and serve your educational dreams. Make sure you get all of that in the package. You might even have your dad or mom involved with you in, re- in negotiating with the recruiter. This is The Ramsey Show. This is fun. This is fun right here. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage, our good friends, Dr. Andrea and Jim, are with us all the way from Bowling Green, Ohio. I got that right. That's correct. Good friends of Ramsey, been friends a long time, and you're here to do a debt-free scream. We are. Yeah, I love it. (laughs) (laughs) Woo! You know, here's a weird fact for you. This is the second Bowling Green, Ohio debt-free scream in a week. Really? What are the chances? I have no idea. Out of that dinky little town. It's wonderful. The lady was a a big, uh, the kids were at the university. They were Mm -hmm. Falcons, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, Andrea. How much debt have y'all paid off? We have paid off $158,000. Whoop, whoop, whoop. How long did this take? 24 months. You rock. Wow. And your range of income during that time? It was, we started off at 130, and then we ended at 109. 
1990. Okay. I know the answer, but the listeners don't. What do you guys do for a living? I am a clinical child psychologist. And I'm a capital project manager. Awesome. Very cool. And what kind of debt was your $158,000? Well, $46,000 was my student loan debt for being going and earning a PhD over 10 years of higher ed. Um, mm-hmm. He didn't come into the relationship with any debt. And then the other 112 was our house. You Whoa. paid off your house! We yes. did! <laughs> we are looking at weird people! <laughs> I love it. Way to go, you guys. What's the house worth? Uh, 300000 We checked Zillow just before we came up here. <laughs> I like that. He was ready. I had, he was. I had, a, I had an appraise 10 yes. minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's a project manager. Well done, you guys. Well done. So a PhD and a project manager and a house worth three hundred grand. Mm-hmm. And you guys are how old? 38. Wow. And 36. On your way to being Baby Steps Millionaires if you're not already. Mm-hmm. Well done, you guys. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. It's neat. And I'm proud of you as your friend, too. Mm-hmm. So very, very well done. Good stuff. All right. So what inspired you 24 months ago to get on this horse and make sure it's done? Well, it's a little bit broken up. So we did it in two phases. Mm-hmm. So back in December of 2013, mm-hmm. when I earned my Ph.D. Mm-hmm. and we had that 46000 we decided, hey, we're just going to we're not going to pay a penny. Mm-hmm. to Sally Mae. We're just going to get rid of it in that six-month grace period. Mm-hmm. And so we just lived off of one salary, and we paid off the 46000 in that six-month grace period oh, wow. before we had any interest. Okay. So we got rid of that. And then... We took a little bit of a break. We bought some stuff. We bought some stuff. With, we cash. Had some with cash. With cash. But you were on Baby Steps 4 through 6 at that point because you're working on your house. Yes. Absolutely. No, and other, we had... no other debt left but the house at that point. Yes. Correct. Right. Okay. And we had some twins via IVF, which is a pretty penny if yeah. anyone's done IVF. Yeah. Um, it costs quite a bit of money. So we had that. And we also bought three cars in that amount of time mm-hmm. um, with cash mm-hmm. and not mm-hmm. new. Mm-hmm. Um, and then probably in December of 2019, that's kind of when we got intense about it with mm-hmm. paying off the house. Yeah. Over the f- course of the years, we had led Financial Peace University and we had walked alongside mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. and one of us would say like, hey, we're teaching Financial Peace University. We're really supposed to be paying off the house early. And then the other one would run the numbers and that person would be like, mm, it's not worth it. I'd be and the then, run running the numbers saying it's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> and I would be like, well, maybe we should try. And he'd be like, uh, no, I want to a little bit and I was like okay Mm -hmm. and then we'd run some more people through financial peace and I'd be like we really should pay off the house and then in December 2019 he looked at me and he was like he ran the numbers again and uh oh we should pay off the house oh no (laughs) there it is Jim what changed uh well when I was doing it early you know you just buy a house you get a 15 year mortgage how much sacrifice am I going to have to make to pay it off, you know, two years early? Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, it's a ton of sacrifice there when you're really early to uh, to pay it off that much yeah. early. And then we just, after seven years or six, seven years, it's like, oh, okay, the number I can hit is much smaller now. And oh, I can actually... It felt attainable. I felt attainable. Yeah, I could do... Oh, in 18 months, in, in 12 months, if we really buckle down, we can actually do this. And yeah. really having that ability to do it was like, all right, let's, let's get after it. And we paid it off. So cool. And then it was funny because then in December of 2020, when we sat down to set up our each of our individual goals, I was like, hey, for a financial goal, let's pay off our house by May 2021. And he ran the numbers again, and he's like, there's no way we can do that. And I was like, but let's set it as a goal. And he's like, there's no way. And then... We, paid we it love this May. back and forth. We paid it May 21st <laughs> of 2021. <laughs> wow. 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 Way to go, you guys. How's it feel to not have a payment in the world? Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, it, it's great. It, it's have just... you run the numbers on that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Give him yeah. a minute, Dave. I, I, I've, I've done the numbers of, you know, He's how... He also hit Zillow right before he came up. Zillow before we come, you know, how much per year, all that. What are we going to have in 20 years? All that stuff. But uh, yeah. it's just the the ability to know that, you know, whatever I am whatever I have is we own everything that we have. And mm-hmm. that any dollar that's coming in, if I'm spending a dollar, like, I don't have to worry about that. Right. I, it, it provides this freedom. It's like, oh, I can help someone out. You know, yeah. I, I, you know, we can make independent 
independent decisions of like, oh, we don't, you know, our, our ability to make financial decisions of just on the spot is so much higher and, and being able to uh, feel that when someone's needs something or we want to do something, it's just, it's done. There's no worry about it because we know we have the money. Amen. And I think the other thing with that is that not only financial decisions, but we can also make career changes. Mm -hmm. So after we paid off the house in May, we actually both changed careers <laughs> wow. in June of this year. Wow. And so we both started new jobs because we had the financial security of we didn't have any more debt. Wow. Good for you. That's very cool. Yeah, because, you know, it's um, I can work where I want now. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It changes everything, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have anybody breathing. I don't have anything breathing down my neck. It says I have to stay in this environment. I can well, do anything. It, it's really interesting the psychology there because it gives you guys a little bit more confidence to make the move because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's a big deal to switch. Yeah. To yeah. pivot, and there's a whole lot of unknowns there. Absolutely. And so they give you that extra confidence. It's really interesting. I got to know. All right, so you're going, maybe, May. He's like, I don't think so. Maybe. And you just wore him down. What was the intensity? I'm just curious. What was the most intense thing you guys did to meet that stretch goal? Because it feels like it was a stretch. It wasn't even really a stretch because what we did was I had opened a private practice in 2020, 2020 and we just didn't touch that money. We just kind of set it aside. So then at the end of 2020, we just took all the money out of the private practice and just threw it at the debt, and then... Oh, I yeah. see. So yeah. Jim was spending that money, and that's why he didn't think it was possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was in his spreadsheet, Dave. It was okay. in the spreadsheet. Yeah, and, right. and it's really, you know, when you get that... Really, you took a second job, really, yeah. of his second career, you just put that all towards it. Although yeah. it didn't feel like that, because no. it was where we wanted to go career-wise anyway. Right. And just kept, you know, two jobs at the, the same time, and then made the transition fully for her to private practice after we paid it off. I love it. I'm so proud of you guys. Thank you. Well done. Well done. All right. When you're teaching financial peace, what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? The key is budget. I cannot tell you the number of times just sit down and have a budget meeting with your spouse mm -hmm. and sit down and run the numbers and give every single dollar a name. And just the, just the amount of people realizing when they actually sit down and do a budget and be like, I should have a thousand dollars more this month. Where is it going? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. You tell me you're the one spending it. No. And then no. it's just life changing and marriage changing. It changes your marriage when you no longer have to fight about ma money. Yeah. Very cool. All right, Jim, have you run the numbers when you're going to be a millionaire? <laughs> uh, yes. It's Soon, if not happened. So <laughs> <laughs> he's sly that yeah, way. He's sure. a sly he dog. knows he's already <laughs> he there. Goes. He's yeah. already there. Way to go, baby steps, millionaires. I love it. Whoop, 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 whoop. This is why I come down here and work still, just for this. There it is. There it is. I'm so proud of you guys. Well, well done. Very well done. Excellent, excellent stuff. All right, who are your biggest cheerleaders outside the two of you? Um. Probably your parents. Yeah, probably my parents. And, you know, my family's been, you know, my mom got me the uh, Totally Money Makeover when I was in college. Ah. Uh, my, my dad would watch you, on, I believe, Fox Business on, like, Saturday morning. You're a financial peace baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, they, they, they yeah, so they just baby. gave me that. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> and my, my grandparents, you know, it was always, you know, not having debt and just, you know, being able to pay for things and yeah. re blessed me with not having any, you know, debt going, coming out of college. I love it. Um, and so that's just kind of my family's business you know, grown up in that. And, uh, and so they were really just, just living, living how we live, you know, Dr. Andrea and Jim, 158,000 paid off 24 months house and everything, not even 40 years old. We suspect they're baby step millionaires. I love it. <laughs> Making 130 to 190 a year. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, two one. We're, we're debt free. This is how it's done, boys and girls. Scripture of the day, Psalms 86, 11. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. 
Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Dr. Martin Luther King said, you don't have to see the whole staircase, just take the first step. Boy, there's so much in that. So much in that. Just take the first step. BJ is with us in Baltimore. Hi, BJ. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. We sure. just love you guys. Um, we were doing the Dave Ramsey, um, and we paid off all of our debt except for our house. Way to go. Um, and we had a second mortgage, so we just have the regular mortgage now. Mm-hmm. So um, the question is, I have a lot of health issues, and I've... I've um, I've had to go to a natural doctor because the regular doctors weren't working. And my husband has a year and a half before he retires. Um, And my aunt has offered to sell us her trailer, but we would have to relocate. And the question is, should we take early retirement and then take the the difference? Because she's practically given it to us. should he, should he take early retirement and then pick up another job because he would need something to do because we could actually live on his um, early retirement? Or should he continue working where he's at and then possibly just rent a place? And But all the rentals are more than what, our, what we would pay. What do you owe on your home? We owe 125 And what does he make? He makes uh, 80. Do you not like your home? I have um, health issues. I can't go up and down steps. The bathroom is up on the second floor and in the basement. So you need to sell the house for health reasons. Yes. To get you into a a one-level property. We could live in the basement, which has a bathroom, but it's... He really wants to live in a basement. Yeah, amen. Okay. And so your house is, would sell for how much? It would sell for uh, 200 to uh, either 180 to 200000 And you owe 125 Yes. Okay. Why don't you sell it and buy a one-bedroom, or I'm sorry, a one-level house around uh, 150 well, in this area, that's Maybe if not you can possible. sell yours for two hundred, you can buy something for one hundred and fifty. That's not that dissimilar to what you're living in. If yours sells for two hundred, the one hundred and fifty will one hundred and seventy five will buy a very nice one level on your freaking street. Uh, okay, well, this is a large house. It's got an apartment in the basement. It's it's all being redone. Okay. So sell it for okay. two hundred, and buy okay. yourself a nice one-level house for one fifty to one seventy-five. Okay, so it wouldn't be a problem to have another mortgage nope. because he retires in a year and a half. Nope, because he's going to keep working after he retires, and he makes enough to live on when he retires. I'm not moving you into a trailer that's going down in okay. value. There's okay. not a good enough okay. deal in the world to move into a trailer. There's not a good enough right. deal in the world to live into a trailer that's going down in value, and this be your signature golden years. No thank you. All right. Sounds I think great. You're, I think you're right. sick of these stairs, and you know, you're just grasping at straws trying to get out of there. But here's the principle, BJ, that you need to hear, okay? Okay. If you're going to sell a house in a market and buy a house in the same market, you're going to sell in the—like, things are crazy over there, Right. Yeah. So you're going to sell in crazy and you're going to buy in crazy. So this is a net net. It's not a net loss. It's not I I sold low and bought high. I sold high and bought high. Mm -hmm. It's a net net. So it doesn't prohibit you from making the move. And, you you know, now if you move from a crazy low market to a crazy high market, you know, you might have an argument then. But if you moved on your same street... You, you, you can move down in house, down in price, and get into one level, three-bedroom house, and, and that's smaller than the one you're living in, and do it in the 150 to 175 range uh, if your current home really is worth 200 
Now, Dave, you were so certain about the trailer. What if it has a redwood deck? Does it change your opinion? <laughs> what if it has an outdoor, <laughs> above-ground pool? You were so, that you were so certain, Dave. I, yeah. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> I feel like you oversimplified that. <laughs> Oh, hey, I'm just talking about uh, things that right. go. I'm talking about things that go down in value. It's absolutely right. I couldn't I, I resist. I'm not above any of that yeah. in terms of being a snob. That's not the point. The no. point is the stinking things go down in value. Yeah. And they're basically a car you sleep in. Alex is with us in New York City. <laughs> hey, Alex, how are you, Redwood Dad? You didn't see that one coming. I didn't see that. Okay. One. What's up, Alex? I, hey, Dave, Ken, how are you? We're doing great, man. What's up? So uh, I kind of have like a part, I guess, student loan and retirement question. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was, as they say, I was dumb and I went to an out-of-state school and um, I let my folks handle a lot of the student loan stuff and borrowed more than I needed. So, um, so yeah, long story short, I paid off the loans in my name to the point where my employer will pick up um, the payments, the minimum payments, and then... The big one is the Pan Plus loans that I'm also paying on. Um, uh, that right now I got it down to one fifty, one hundred fifty thousand. Wow. Um, so you've, your parents to took out, out Parent Plus loans, but you've agreed morally to pay them. Yes. You're not legally obligated, but you you that's the deal between you and your mom and dad. Yes. Okay. And your student loans are all uh, gone. Uh, all except for eight thousand, but my employer they're paying um, a certain amount per month yeah. on it. What's your I degree in? It down in the accounting. What do you make? Uh, right now, I make eighty. How old are you? Twenty-four. Master's degree in accounting? No, uh, I decided to go to community college for the one hundred and fifty credits. So I, <laughs> I was smart with that. I decided not to uh, build a master's degree. You went to a community college for $150,000 in student loans debt on a Parent PLUS loan? No. No, no, no. So I went to uh, uh, an out-of-state college for a year. Um, so most of the, uh, what was it, 180 ended up being for the my four years. And then I, I just cash flowed 2000 for community college. Because for accounting, you need... 30 extra credits, so I just did a community college instead of master's. Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay. Yeah, you're talking about credit. You're just talking about getting your CPA. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So you're 24 and you're making 80 grand. All right. Yes. Well, you got 150 to go. Yeah. Okay. So I was, I was, that, my question was, like, yeah. I wasn't sure, like, if since it's not in my name. Oh, like, it's, it's in your like, name. You shook your daddy's hand. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. yeah, this is your. You took on this debt. You you claimed this debt. Yeah. I heard you a minute ago. Yeah. I don't care okay. if the, the law doesn't say you owe it, but the law of the of your household says you owed it because you're a man and you gave your word. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you're gonna pay it. Yeah, I was, I was so you're gonna treat it like your debt because it is your debt. The, the technicality right. of the legal technicality don't get you out of it. You're gonna pay it anyway, so you're gonna pay it like it's your debt because it is your debt now. You took it on, so yeah, fifty thousand bucks a year for three years, you're done, and that means you're on beans and rice, rice and beans, or forty thousand dollars a year for four years, and you're done. Uh, by the way, your income's gonna increase dramatically from eighty as you move on from twenty-four years old up through an accounting degree, and so all of those increases do not go to partying or having fun in New York. They go to paying off daddy's loan that you promised him you would pay <laughs> yeah, yeah. did i read yeah. your mail all right oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> he was just running his weekend schedule through his head right there <laughs> just cancel that yeah. vacation of that all-inclusive yeah. in jamaica that's what just happened hello yeah so you got to clean this mess up dude <laughs> 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 and the fast deeper you sacrifice the faster you'll get out that's the formula and the faster you get out the better life you're going to have live like no one else so later you can live and give like no one else great job ken coleman thank Thanks for having me. Great job, Jen, Jen, James, Jim, Jim Childs. <laughs> That's what I'm Little calling him. Jimmy's in there. We'll be back before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, guys, this is James, senior producer for The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? 
And a lot of those people listen on one of our 600 plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, head to theramseyshow.com.